All right, welcome back. Um, a lot of talk has been about the Amoteco issue in the southwestern part of Nigeria. A lot of talk about the security or the lack of it and how we want to start tackling it. Uh, some of the quote-unquote regional governors have tried to set up things in their regions to try and sort of assist the police and the efforts of the security operatives to make their states and regions more secure. Um, but there's still a lot of very scary stories that we hear from across Nigeria. And I have here with me public affairs analyst Olufemi Bite to help me um, talk about this. Thanks for being here today. Thank you for um, having me. Without necessarily talking about the Southwest in particular, I mean, every part of Nigeria has something they're fighting. And we had, I think it was two days ago, about issues in Kaduna again, about kidnapping. And, you know, there's every, every day there's a new thing happening somewhere. There's fears now even in Lagos with regards to all of the bans that have happened and there's more people who are unemployed and we don't know what they're going to fall back on. Um, what are we doing wrong and what should we be doing with regards to security in this country? Because it, it seems like every day, as we tackle one, something else raises its head. Well, thank you very much. As regards security, Nigeria is at the tipping point. And of course, we need the president or perhaps the executive um, arm of the government to be proactive in creating solutions. Just like you said, insecurity. What causes insecurity? Unemployment, climate change. Climate change brings about unemployment, brings about poverty. So all these things, they all come together. So there is no way we can solve insecurity without first looking, taking an holistic approach into the economic framework. So then we need the, the government to, we need a, a paradigm shift, a new philosophy, because if you looked at it for the past five years, or let's say six, seven years, we've been battering in Boko Haram, now we have banditry, now we have kidnappers. And if you look at the history of insecurities, it started in the South-South where it's all about resource control. But now it's about ideology. It's about um, religious belief. So we need a philosophy, a new philosophy, a new paradigm to curb insecurity in Nigeria. What, how do we achieve that, though? Because it looks like we've been talking about this um, for as long as democracy has been, at least. And let's forget about the military era when we didn't have a voice, per se. But since 1999, we've been talking about the need to secure Nigeria. And like I said, there's always something happening. What, what, what should we be doing differently? Because we, we have a president who came in in 2015 saying security was one of his major sort of uh, tackling points, talking about moving the head, the head office of the defense uh, to the northeast. northeast. But I mean, there's other parts of the country that are also battling things. Are we localizing the fight enough? We thought Boko Haram was dead. We hear that they are still being attacked. There are still attacks happening across the country, or uh, parts of north, the Northeast. What are we? What are we? What should we be doing? Because uh, people have also talked about: should governors have more control of security operatives? Is that a viable option? Even since you know, the closer the government to people, the, probably the better. Thank you very much. I'll start with the um, what we should be doing right. You talked about having. Um, the security closer to people, probably having state police. And we also need to look at how we need to localize policing, that is community policing. We need to get people who will give us information gathering. That's very, very important. Now, if you looked at it, the Southwest governors, they come up with um, Amotekun, all in the name of what? Safeguarding the region. And you could see the response that came from the North. So we need to have a regional approach to security. That's one. And another thing which is affecting them, the security architecture of this country is um, People don't trust the institutions. And our judicial, our criminal judicial system is faulty. It's very, very faulty. So you can imagine a Boko Haram be, um, how will I put it, being returned back into the society. It's because I feel, well, there's, there's no moral justification for you not being a Boko Haram member as far as you can drop the arms. And you can also look at our border control. Our border is so poor, so we have armed proliferation through the land border. So all these things need to be checked by the presidency. And of course, we need to advise the presidency that he needs to come down from his high horse and, and begin to see things the way they are. And also look at some of the policies. Because if you look at some of the policies of this administration as regards security, they are not going to tackle the real security issue. The service chiefs have been there for over five years and we've not seen improvement. The last time we had the, the parliamentarians talked about it, they, they, they had issues like, oh, they were so, they were burning with food, they're like, oh, we've got resolutions, we have to make the president, this had to happen. 
But by the time they got the leadership of the parliament, they got to have meeting with the presidency, you can see there was a 180 degree turnaround from their approach. So you had the Speaker of the House of um, Representatives saying, oh, we can't do a new jack approach. So something is definitely wrong. It's either the National Assembly, they are not on the people's path. They just want to, just like people say, um, they, they are like an annex of the executive arm. So because security issues need to, need to be more, we need to be more prag pragmatic about it. Now, a regional approach to security, the president was as, um, at the AU um, AU, AU Security Summit. And looking at the African Union, now we need to bring about a security architecture whereby there is um, information exchange between the African Union countries. So that we, when we know that there's a criminal coming in from probably, let's say, from Mali, from Lake Chad, and, and, the, and the country that surrounds us, there's a way we control their entrance into our country, which is as a result of, as a result of that, we were banned by the um, United States. Because people coming through our land borders, they come into Nigeria and they just, they take um, citizenship. And before you know it, they go into another country and all these things, terrorism, Boko Haram appears to be either the third or fourth terrorist group on the global map. So these are issues for concern. So government needs to, one, change their policy. We need to strengthen our institution. People must know that when you do this, it's either it's a death penalty, a life imprisonment, and we need to, be, we need to stick to it very, very well. Then, of course, like, like we talked about, regional policing, community policing, so that it will help in information gathering. Our borders were recently closed. Well, not too recently, but our borders have been closed for quite a bit now. And, um, I mean, you talked about people coming into the country. Do you think measures like that would help, for example, to prevent uh, criminals from coming into Nigeria, closure De of our borders? Well, definitely, if you look at um, border closure from economic point of view, some argue that um, there are ways you approach the closure of the border because you must be able, you must be able to have substantial resources to run your, gov um, your economy as a result of things coming in, let's say they say rice, smuggling, and et cetera. But because people are still coming in. Because of if that. you go to Seme border, if you go to the border in Badagri, they are not really concerned about people coming in. In fact, they are more concerned about rice coming in than even the people. So what we are talking about is people coming in with these arms. And I can tell you, it is because it's still boils on the same thing, which we don't have enough intelligence gathering. Yeah. The DSS, the police, the military, they should be well equipped. We are talking about modern technology. We are talking about where we can exchange information. We are talking about community policing, whereby we sink policing into the community. So the community leaders know that it's their responsibility to share quality information. But the question is, when you share these quality informations, are the government agencies ready to run with it? Very, very important question. The only final, Nuna, very, very quickly, one or two sentences. Is this, how do we separate politics from the need you've mentioned for this regional sort of policing that's about to start? That's the governors are clamoring for. Now that's, take politics out of it very now, quickly. Now that's the major issue we are facing because we, just like so, um, in, a, in the street parlance on Twitter, they will say, we play too much. In this country, you can imagine, I read this morning on Twitter, someone said, if you can give a Twitter influencer, um, influencer a substantial amount, the person would defend the Boko Haram. Now this is it. We need to have an holistic approach to security. We need to look at our security architecture then, of course, Maybe we have to do a regional conference, just like the way they did for Amotekun and they came up with Amotekun. So with that, it will help us to understand the needs. Okay. Because if you look at the northeast, the northwest, you know that poverty, insecurity is the bane. So but when you come to southwest, people are still a bit enlightened. So you need to, then of course, the government need to look at the National Orientation Agency. What are they doing? They need to start talking to people so that people understand that, hey, when you do this, there's a consequence. When you do this, this is what you get. So it will help us to curb the menace of insecurity in our country. Well, thank you very much for sharing your thoughts with us. I mean, I think we're all concerned about hoping that 2020 gives us some positive answers, especially with regards to security. Thanks for being here today. Thank you very much. Like I always say, you can follow the conversation on Twitter at Robin Minds now is our handle. Please use the hashtag Robin Minds when you tweet at us. Have a great week. I'll see you next Sunday. Hey, hey, hey.